see, where do I want to start? Ah, here's where I want to start. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Today is probably going to be pretty short. Um, unlike steel design, I think I'm actually going to remember to pass the sign-in sheet around. Um, so a couple things. Number one, I've had a number of you send me your course evals, your, your messages and what have you. I promise you I have not forgotten it. Um, it instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assign the grades, excuse me, I'm going to assign the grades at the very end. <coughs> so once the course evals are all completed, I'm literally just going to take the roster, go through my inbox and say, all right, you know, did you send me an email? Yes, five points. Did you this? Did you that? And just, you know, do it like that. So I promise I haven't forgotten about um, uh, your, your messages if you haven't, uh, or if, if you haven't, uh, if I haven't responded to your messages, I promise I haven't forgotten. Okay. Um, so let's see, a couple other things. Oh, so this is essentially our last lecture in Reinforced Concrete. This is it. Well, no, it is it. I mean, we have our we have we meet on Friday for you all to turn in your uh, uh, your your last homework. I'll give you the solutions to that homework, and then we'll go over the final exam and do exam review, but no more lecture. Somebody's an engineer. That's what it is. Somebody's an engineer. No, um, this is our last recorded lecture. I'll say. So here's the deal. I'm not taking these videos down at all. They will stay on YouTube as long as YouTube will let me keep them up there. But I'm not making them public either. So if you want to hold on to the recordings, I'd save that playlist link, put it somewhere on your flash drive or whatever, and there you go. Sound good? Yeah, well, that's why it's on, it's why it's on Blackboard. The link's there. Yeah, if you bookmark the link, then, then yeah. The, the idea behind unlisting it is that it, it's not password protected, but you can't, as he's, he's correct, you cannot search. Like, so nobody can go reinforce concrete design lectures and find my videos, all right? Because I did that with the FE playlist, and I get random messages from all over. I mean, it's, no, I get messages. I, and, yeah, I still don't know how that works. I mean, but you got to understand, if I post them under Greg Michelson and I'm a professor at Marshall, you can find my contact info pretty easily. I'm a state employee, pretty public, so. Uh, oh, I, I made the FE playlist uh, unlisted, and it was like I, you know, s stepped on their cat or something. They're like, where to go, where to go, where to go, bring it back, bring it back. I'm like... Yeah, I, so I've just decided to head it off and, and make it unlisted. <coughs> what? I, I don't, well, you know, I, I must not, I must have been doing something wrong because at the end of one of these videos, I don't go, hit that subscribe button right here. Yeah. <laughs> I need a lo like a like a logo right here. You know, turn annotations off. Nobody wants to see that. Or <laughs> okay, I don't even know how to respond to that. Okay, um, what else? I'm trying to think if there's anything, uh, any other pressing issues. Um, <coughs> no, actually, I think that's it. Um, no, we have we still have lecture today. So. Let me, um, let me get the uh, uh, handout for today passed out. One, two, three, four, five, six. <coughs> okay. So last time we talked about the concept of a PM curve. And the idea was, given a strain condition, we can use equilibrium to determine how much force and how much moment would cause that level of strain. And keep in mind, because 
we're talking about strains and stresses at the ultimate stage, those axial forces and moments, those are the capacities. So we plot those and we get an interaction diagram that looks something like this. Now, this is an interaction diagram for a specific column with specific dimensions and specific reinforcement. <coughs> what ACI has been kind enough to do is to produce these. Now, this is what I just handed you all out. These are <coughs> sort, of, sort of what I'll call generalized interaction diagrams. So, the first thing that you'll notice is you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight individual interaction diagrams on each plot. Everybody see that? Now those interaction diagrams correspond to reinforcement ratios. This is a reinforcement ratio of 1%, 2%, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way to 8%. Why does it go from 1% to 8%? Because those are the limits on reinforcement. You are not allowed to use a reinforcement ratio smaller than 1% or larger than 8%. So that, those are our bounds anyways. <coughs> yes? That's a good question. And uh, so why can't you go more than that? Well, it all goes to, I mean, well, let, let, let me say this. Okay, so there's a number of things that go into decisions like this. You know, one factor is you have to have a, a, a sufficient amount of concrete in order to develop that reinforcement. Okay, so that's number one. So having more and more reinforcement means less and less concrete. Now, you know, we could argue that's not a big deal. But there's also things like the difference between tensile controlled sections and compression controlled sections. If you remember, one of the easiest ways to describe that is to look at things like beams. If you remember with beams, we looked at the economy of reinforced concrete sections and we said, well, what happens if you keep throwing more and more steel into the beam? Does the beam theoretically get stronger? Well, yeah, but it's not just that. There's also it's the, the safety considerations. Remember that more and more steel means you have a compression controlled section. Compression con controlled sections experience compressive failures. Remember, tensile failures are slow and ductile gives you a lot of warning. Compression controlled, quick, you know, that's bad. Grandma's in the river and she's in the river quick. So to answer your question, <coughs> it, there, there's a number of reasons why that's the case. Um, there's also just, you know, uh, the code specifying bodies getting together and saying that's about a maximum reasonable limit for the purposes of an economical design. I mean, it's not as simple as just, here's why. There's a lot of things that go into it. Does that make sense? For what? Let me say this. Um, compute the capacity. Tell me the, the, the nominal capacity of a 24 by 24 inch concrete column with 8% rebar in it. I, I'm serious. Do the math. You're talking about a column that's pretty strong. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about ridiculous loads. I mean, you're getting into the 15, 1600 kip range. You, you know what I mean? So. I mean, in, in that range, do you really want to start risking violating limits anyways? I mean, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> you, see, you see what I mean? So, um, I mean, you know, one of those things about engineering is you, you have these limits. You know, if you had a reinforcement ratio of 0 0.08001, does that mean the column's going to explode? Probably not, but I don't want to push it at those levels. That's me, you know. If you know you want to, I mean, go right ahead, but make sure your stamp's on it, not mine. You, you know, you know what I mean. That, that, that's where I'm, that's where I'm getting at. Okay. Like on the it, on like the other end of the country, right? The other end of the globe. Yeah. Well, um, I might wake up a couple times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah.
Oh, goodness. Let's move on from nuclear reactors and, and look at these plots. Now, a couple things about these plots. Okay, last time we looked at the naming. So, this L460.6, the L, sorry, excuse me, the L stands for a rectangular column that only has two layers of reinforcement. If you go down a little bit, I think it's like page maybe five, <coughs> look at the R columns, they have three layers, one, two, three. Everybody see that? That's the difference between the R and the Ls. Now the four and 60 stand for the concrete strengths. Um, all you all need for the purposes of what we're doing in here is four KSI concrete, 60 KSI steel. Excuse me. <coughs> um, gamma is that ratio between this dimension and this dimension. So you all have a gamma 0 0.6, a gamma 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0.9. What if gamma is like 0 0.75? And you have a graph for 0 0.7 and 0 0.8, what do you do? Huh? Take the average. <coughs> all right, so here's how these graphs work. You compute what's called a KN value and an RN value. A KN is sort of a dimensionless parameter that tells you how much, um, I guess what I'll call percent axial load is there, on the there is on the section. So if your KN is like 0.5, you're 50% of the way between the load and FC prime AG is basically what that's saying. So KN is your dimensionless parameter related to the axial load. RN is the dimensionless parameter related to the bending moment. So what you'll do is you'll say, all right, let's do a dimension, or let's calculate a KN and an RN. Now let's, let's look at this plot, for instance, okay? And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. All right. <coughs> let's say you've got a KN of 0.6 and an RN of 0.2. That's gonna put you about, I don't know, let me see if this works. About right there, right? Make sense? Okay. So you tell me this is point, point 0.01, point 0.02, point 0.03, point 0.04. I mean, what are we at? Let's see. We've got, you know, like that. And then like that. I don't know, maybe 0 0.0032. Or zero. Sorry, that's one extra zero. Something like that? Is that about sound good? That's basically the long and short of it. <coughs> Look up your reinforcement ratio, multiply that by the area of the column, tells you how much rebar goes into it. That's it. About as simple as, it. see these aren't too complicated are they? Now if we had, like I said, a 0.75, do this on the 0.7 graph, do this on the 0.8 graph, average. Or interpolate, you know, however you want to look at it. Make sense? That's all there is to it. So, um, <coughs> so we're going to do an example, and that'll be how you do number three on the homework. I decided to eliminate number four on the homework because number four, it's not a difficult problem, but there's a little bit of running around with these plots. And honestly, if I wanted you all to do number four correctly, I'd have you, you know, create an Excel file and plot the interaction diagram for real. But it starts to get above and beyond what we really need to do for this class. And besides, in design mode, you're just going to use these anyway. So I think it's pretty straightforward. All right. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right. So here's how we would design. We go in, we compute a KN value and an RN value, look those up on the respective plots, and there we go, or they're right here. So determine your factored load, determine PN and MN. When you're in design mode, most of the range of a, uh, of a uh, beam column is in the, like the 0.65 range for phi. So we'll make an assumption right at the beginning that phi is 0.65 for rectangular columns or if you're doing circular, 0.75. Determine your eccentricity, which that might be given to you in a problem. Instead of being specified a load, or instead of being given a load and a moment, you might just be given a load 
at an eccentricity. So the moment is the load times the eccentricity. So you might be given E. If not, just take load over uh, moment. <coughs> All right. Your gamma is that, that factor between the rebar or the distance between the rebar and the total height of the column. Calculate Kn and Rn. Look, at your, look up your row value and calculate the amount, required amount of steel. It's super simple. All right. You all right? All right. So here's a column. The column is, uh, let's see, we've got a column that is 14 by 20. It's used to support the following dead loads, uh, dead forces, uh, or dead and live load forces and dead and live load moments, as you see uh, right here. And I want to determine how much reinforcement needs to go. Now, I'm assuming that this is two layers of reinforcement. So do I use the L charts or the R charts? L, right? Uh, <coughs> and, and there we go. So this, like I said, this will probably be pretty straightforward. Okay. Now, one thing uh, I'll say, I have two layers of reinforcement and I have three bars. I'm not saying you have to use literally three bars on the bottom and three bars on the top. It's just saying you have two layers. Okay. Sound good? All right, so we've got <coughs> following values. All right, now we've got a dead load of 125 and a live load of 140. So what can we do? There we go. Anybody got that for me? All right. <clears throat> now, we also have dead and live load moments. Anybody got that? Okay. <clears throat> so, we start off by computing our required capacity. And we're dealing with a square or rectangular column, so I'm going to use a fee of 0 0.65. So PN is PU over phi, which is 374 kips over 0 0.65, and MN is MU over phi. All right, what do we got? All right, sound good? 
Okay. Now our section properties What's AG? The gross area of the column. Well, how would we compute it? Say it again. No, that's the moment of inertia. I'm talking about just the area. No, well, we're just talking about the gross area. All right. <coughs> now, what about E? E is going to be MN over PN. Now, eccentricities, because of units, that needs to be converted. What do we get? Is it five one? Okay. <coughs> now, here's our section. It looks something like this. How tall is this section? Okay. Now, there's a layer of steel, you know, somewhere about right here, and a layer of steel somewhere about right here. What is this dimension? All right. So, what's gamma? Yeah, 15. zero point seven five. <clears throat> All right, sound good? The what? Well that's yeah, you're yeah, okay. That's where we're gonna interpolate because we only have we only have one for point seven and for point eight. So we're gonna look up one in both of them and take the average. All right, so, all right, so can I go ahead and go on to the next panel, or do y'all need this up here for a minute? Y'all good? All right. No, excuse me. All right, so KN, oh, I dropped my paper. All right, get back over here. KN is what? PN over FC prime AG, which is what? I think they're better than that. then this is <coughs> all right so what do we got five one well like four okay all right we'll do that to try and get it as exact as possible we aren't going to we probably aren't going to be able to go to more than two decimal places but we'll calculate three just for the heck of it now watch this what's the formula for rn Why don't we just do this? Right? Because this right here is 
That's Kn, right? So it's Kn times E over H. E was 7.51, H is 20. What do we get? There we go. <coughs> All right, so let me write this down over here so that I have that. All right. Okay. Y'all have this? Am I good to move away? All right. Now, we have a gamma of 0.75. That means we have to use the 0.7 and the 0.8. So help me out. Let's go here. Okay, so I'm on page two of that handout I gave you, the L460.7. So what do we have? Let's see. 514. Wish we could here. Actually, whoop. Let's see if I can draw straight. Like do a can I do a like an actual straight line? No, that won't work. Let's do this. What's that? I can borrow your straight edge. I, my kung fu is strong. Give me a moment. We'll see. Um, but I had it on the actual program, so we're gonna we're gonna try some. I think that's the one where I can actually draw the straight line. Yeah, that's it. So we'll make that that. All right. So <coughs> 0.514, somewhere about right there. Is that about right? And then 0.193. Somewhere about like that. Is that what you all are getting? So what is that? 0 0.022? Right? Because what we're trying to do is figure out the distance between, you know, here to here, and then there to there. Is that about 20%? Sound good? Y'all see what I'm doing? All right, so that's about 0.22 or 0.022. All right, let's do the next one. So I did the I did this one. You do the next one. So what's that? That's rho g. <coughs> yes. Oh, you, I'll, I'll use. It. Okay, so you got so we got point zero two two for that one. What are we getting for the next one? One zero one eight. Anybody get that? Do you have you looked at it? So we calculated a KN and an RN, and I'm just going finding the point. This is 0.01, 0.02, 0.03, so that's about 0.022. Now that's on the L460.7. Now we got to do the L64 or L60.8. So, all right, we have a value of 0.018. Do you get that? You second that? Y'all got that? 
I mean, really, I mean, motion. <laughs> motion to pass. Is there any seconds? Second. Any discussion on the topic? All right. So let me delete this. Or here, I'll just go back up here. So, um, so I'll say from L four sixty point seven, I'm getting a row G of about zero point zero two two. So. What do we take row G to be? The average. <laughs> so, our required steel is row G A G, which is which is that. This is a potential, oh, go away. This is a potential solution to this problem. <coughs> so, using the beam column charts, you what? You're shaking your head. This is, all right, hold on, so bear with me. Using our beam column charts, we interpolated and got a row of 0.02. So the amount of steel that needs to go into this section is 0.02 times 280 or 5.6 square inches. We just need to pick a pattern that works. This is a potential pattern that works, six number nines. Six number nines has an area of six square inches. What's up? What's that? Well, if I put a cover of three inches and say, all right, it's 14 inches minus six on each side, that's eight. The whole column is 14 inches. No, it does, that, no, you don't need to you, you don't need to meet that. You just need to meet spacing along a single row. I promise. But I'm serious, it's just spacing along a single row. If you had a bar here then you would. Top and bottom? Well, usually a minimum cover requirement of something like an inch and a half, so this is well meeting that. Because that would be, well, two and a half from center of bar to the end, so what about like two, a little less than two inches, something like that? Any questions? You good? You good? Yes. Point seven three. So you would just use linear interpolation. That, that that's all you do. Like remember in steel design when we had the column charts and you know if you had a KL effective of twenty two point three, it's the same thing. They all seem a little tired. What's, I mean, what? But 
I don't understand what that means. Well, that's a good question. All right, let me say, all right, rebar on the sides would make sense for a column like this if it was being bent that way. It's not. It's being bent this way. I don't... Un it's also not a square section either. I don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, <coughs> Here, give me one, one moment. All right, look, let me show you something. Let me just show you something real quick. All right. This is a beam column where the bars have only been placed here and here because it's being bent that way. If I put bars here and here, they wouldn't be very effective. Because those are the only forces that are on it. I must be an inspiring guy. <laughs> All right, that's a good question. What, when, when would a column only experience the bending in one direction? Um, it's not so much when would it experience bending in one direction as what we're designing it for. T take this building. Okay, this building is going to have, now, hold on, this is a good question in general, all right? So this building is going to have something like, let's say, a moment frame that is meant to withstand lateral loads in this direction. Then it is going to have a separate lateral load resisting system for loads this way, okay? Now, what about loads that act in any given direction? Some of it goes to this frame and some of it goes to that frame. But if I look at a single element, I am only designing it to withstand axial load and bending load that way. Does that make sense? Okay. Did I answer your question? Oh, you did. Do, do you like that column better? No. I still don't like it. But if you think about KU Green, it's going to go right in on the board to the beam or whatever. Yeah, right here. Your tick marks? The tick marks aren't every like point one over here or whatever. <coughs> All right. Any other questions about this? Well then, ladies and gentlemen, that is reinforced concrete design. Um, your homework is due on Friday. We will go over the exam on Friday. And that's it. I'll see you all on Friday. And this is our last recording, so sayonara. Hit that subscribe button.